What's going on everyone, today I'm going to be giving you my top 10 most anticipated television shows of 2024. So of course I did this for my most anticipated movies of 2024, that was a very fun video to do. There's obviously a lot of movies coming out next year that I'm really looking forward to, but I decided I wanted to do this for TV shows as well. And these are just new seasons of these shows coming out. Some of these are brand new shows that are only having their first season, whereas other shows here are already far into their seasons. Let's just get right into it, starting with the number 10 spot, which is going to be Creature Commandos. Now, this is a show that I'm only excited for because it is the first ever DCU project, the first official DCU project. Of course, this is going to be written by James Gunn and is going to follow a group of military superhumans composed by a human leader, a werewolf, a vampire, Frankenstein's monster, and a Gorgon. So it's just this really wacky group of people. It almost looks like it's going to be the Suicide Squad in a sense, but in a very different way with these really weird looking creatures. It is going to be an animated series, but just because of the first DCU project, I really can't wait to get a look into what this universe might actually be like. Obviously, it's not going to be live action, so they're probably not going to show like that much of the universe, but I'm just really hoping for a good new animated comic book show. I think this could definitely be that, especially if James Gunn, you know, brings out his all in terms of the writing here. So. I'm really looking forward to this, even though it's something that I don't know a lot about. I just know the general idea of it. And Weasel from the Suicide Squad movies is going to be appearing in this. So that's going to be cool. In the number nine spot, I've got the Ted prequel series. Now, the Ted prequel series literally releases in like a week and a half from now. So this is coming out really, really soon. But I'm a big fan of the Ted movies. Ted 1 and Ted 2 are among some of my favorite comedy films of all time. I really just love sec that Seth MacFarlane and his writing. He's probably one of the funniest writers out there, at least in my opinion. I absolutely love Family Guy. And obviously his voice for Ted is just, it's always hilarious. So as long as it keeps up the same comedy as those films did, as long as it has a fresh feel to it, I think it's gonna be a funny show. And I'm really just hoping for a good modern comedy, because honestly, I haven't seen a comedy in a long time that's really grabbed my attention all that much. And it being, you know, a prequel series for Ted sounds like a pretty good idea. Obviously, it's, you know, sad we're not going to have Mark Wahlberg there. Would I prefer to Ted 3? Probably. But this is honestly pretty good in of itself. And I think if the show does well enough, they probably will end up doing a Ted 3. But just as a prequel, I think it could definitely be really good. In number 8 spot, I've got The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon Season 2, which is apparently titled the book of carol or at least that's like the subtitle for it of course carol is returning to this season we got a tease of that at the end of season one and i'm excited to see that i think they're definitely going to have a cool dynamic between daryl and carol here and that's honestly what's making me most excited for this season i did enjoy season one quite a bit i actually think it was the best walking dead spinoff we've ever had but i'm just not quite sure how different it's going to be compared to season one i think i was a lot more excited for season one just based on the fact that it felt like such a new thing but we're still going to be in the same location, at least based on the trailers. It looks like we're going to be still, you know, in Paris and France, at least in that general area. I think I'm just a little bit worried that this season's going to be mostly Carol looking for Daryl. Like if it has Carol and Daryl come across each other in the first episode, that's a great sign. That means we're in for something special. But I'm really worried they're going to drag it out to the last episode just so they reunite in like the final episode of season two. And that would really bother me because I do not want to see a season where Carol's just on her own the whole time trying to get to Daryl. No, have her come across Daryl literally at the end of the first episode. That's how it should be. And then we can have a full season with Carol and Daryl together and just seeing more of their dynamic. I, I would love to see that. I also hope they start to get, you know, into more conversations about Rick. I hope we get more tie-ins with the Rick series. Obviously, the Rick series is coming out first. So maybe by the time that comes out, we will get some answers as to, you know, about whether or not Rick has returned yet because Carol made it seem like Rick has returned already based on what she was trying to tell Daryl over the radio. But at the same time, I, I don't know if that's actually what she was trying to say. She could have been saying a number of things. So I have no idea, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they're going to do this season. It's likely going to be a full continuation of season one in terms of the story, because that story didn't completely end. So there's definitely some things they still have to tie up. Hopefully it's just going to be a season two. I don't want to see too many seasons of this show. I want them to try to cross over with the other stuff eventually. But yeah, definitely very excited for it nonetheless. In number seven spot is going to be Invincible Season 2B. Now, of course, the first half of Season 2 of Invincible did release at the end of last year. I did react to that on this channel, so definitely go check out those reactions if you're curious. 
but the last half of season two did not release yet and it's apparently supposed to be coming out this year they do not have a release date yet which is really weird because a lot of people are saying it's going to be early 2024 but if it was early 2024 why aren't the release dates revealed yet you know what i mean you'd think they would tell us it's going to come out next month if it was going to come out next month you know so it's making me think it might not come out till like spring summer or even fall but i guess we'll have to wait and see i'm still really looking forward to it because the way season two ended especially with the whole viltrumite storyline i need to see what's going to happen next i need to see what Mark's going to do, how he's going to, you know, if he's going to save his father, like what's going to happen there. I have no idea, but I'm so curious because Invincible is a great series. I'm really, really, I've really been enjoying it. There's some moments that are definitely a lot slower, but once you get the really good stuff, it's like, it's some of the best television you'll ever watch. So definitely recommend checking out Invincible if you haven't already, but I cannot wait for the second half of season two. In number six spot is going to be the Penguin series. Now I know we're getting a lot of comic book series, in this ranking that's just honestly i'm sure there's going to be other shows that are going to be a lot better that'll come out that i don't know about currently but at least the ones that are currently announced these are the ones you know that i'm most excited for so the penguin of course is going to be a series about the penguin from the matt reeves batman universe i'm really just excited to have them expand upon the batman universe i do believe it's going to be tvma so that's really exciting of course the batman was pg-13 it was not r-rated so they weren't able to show maybe as much as they could in this series. And obviously, you know, it, the Penguin being who he is, there's going to be a lot of brutal stuff in it. I'm sure of it. Colin Farrell is amazing as the Penguin here. So I would love to see more of that character. And I think a TV series is the best way to do that. I hope they do a lot more stuff like that, as well as, you know, movie spinoffs as well, which I do believe they're planning to do that. So that's really cool. I'm not sure if this is going to be a prequel for the Penguin or if it's going to be a sequel. I hope it's a sequel, I'd rather a sequel, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Maybe there'll even be a cameo of Batman at some point in the series, but they don't need that. They definitely don't need to do that. I don't think it's ever a requirement, but would it be cool to have him show up for an episode and maybe kick Penguin's ass or something? I don't know, that would be kind of interesting. But it's likely gonna be a very mobster heavy type show, and if they can do that well, then it is definitely gonna be a great series. <laughs> <laughs> in number five spot is going to be echo now echo releases in a, just about a week i think so very very soon for this and the reason why i'm so excited for it is just because it's the first mcu project that's going to be tvma which is also the same as r-rated so finally having an r-rated project in the mcu is huge because we have never gotten that before you know we've had marvel movies that have been r-rated but we've never had an mcu project r-rated and i know some people like to consider you know the netflix daredevil stuff are as you know mcu but that's not technically mcu so i'm not gonna you know throw it in there but if you want to make that argument sure but whatever regardless this is the first official mcu project that is tvma and as much as i'm not like that interested in the echo character i want to be interested in her and i hope this series can do that i hope this series can make her a really great character because just based off of hawkeye she wasn't anything too crazy but this show could definitely have potential to make her a very interesting character. Of course, also we're gonna have Kingpin there and even Darede Daredevil's gonna show up now. Do I think Daredevil's gonna be in a lot of the show? Probably not. We do know there's gonna be a long fight sequence between the two of them, apparently a seven minute long fight sequence, which sounds insane. And we've seen a little clip of it online that's leaked recently. It looks decent. It doesn't look like the best action I've ever seen, but it also doesn't look bad either. It looks better than a lot of the action in the MCU. So. I think it definitely has potential to be a damn good series with some damn good violence and some damn good action. As long as it has a good story along with it, I'm all I'm all for it. In number four spot is going to be The Acolyte. Now, this is a brand new Star Wars series. I only have one Star Wars series on my list. There are a couple other Star Wars shows that are coming out this year, but I'm just not as excited for any of them. There's The Bad Batch season three. I haven't watched season one and two yet, so I obviously can't really be excited for season three of that if I haven't watched the first two seasons yet. I will get to those eventually though for sure then there's also the skeleton crew which based on the description of it doesn't really sound that interesting to me but i'm sure i'll check it out hopefully it's going to be decent and i believe andor season two was supposed to come out this year but apparently it's not actually going to be coming out this year it's likely going to be coming out in 2025 so other than that though we have the acolyte here and the acolyte is without a doubt the one i'm most excited for and it's definitely one of the most exciting shows of this year and let me let me explain why i'm going to go in depth as to why this show excites me so much. So first of all, this is the first ever live action Star Wars project that's going to take place before The Phantom Menace, or of course, episode one. It's gonna be 
in the High Republic era, which is apparently 400 years before episode one. It's something like that. It's like, it's the period of time but before episode one. And just a short description of this series is that it's a Star Wars series that takes viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. So the final days of the High Republic era. So chances are it's probably not going to be that far before episode one, but it's far enough to at least give it that unique feel. But it's going to have that prequel feel just based on the fact that it's you know around that same time. We've had so many shows that have been taking place after episode seven or, you know, between episode three and four. I'm, I was getting sick of that period of time because there's just too many shows in that period of time. You know, Andor, Obi-Wan, um, Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and the Book of Boba Fett are all within that time period of either between episode three and four or between episode six and episode seven. So having something before episode one in that period is just going to be so refreshing because the only show that we've ever had before episode one was, of course, Tales of the Jedi, which had you know, some flashbacks before episode one, but that's all animated stuff. This is the first live action full series. It's not an anthology before episode one. Daphne Keene is also going to be in this, which she is a great actress. She was, of course, um, from Logan. She played uh, Laura. So if anybody loves that actress, she's going to be in this, which will be kind of cool to see. And probably the most exciting thing about this show is actually the fact that the one of the main directors of this series, there's two main directors for it. One of the main directors, he directed episodes of Daredevil, The Punisher, and The Witcher. Now, I have not seen The Witcher, but I've heard great things, so I'm assuming that's a good thing. But I've, of course, seen Daredevil and The Punisher, and I love how those two shows are directed. But specifically, which episodes did he direct of those shows? For The Daredevil, he directed Season 3, Episode 4, which is regarded as one of the best episodes of comic book television ever ever i mean you remember that long one take sequence in episode four of season three that everybody always praises yeah he directed that shit he also directed season three episode 10 which had a great fight scene between daredevil and dex so i mean this is a good sign if, if this director is working on this project that that's a damn good sign and i believe one of the writers of this series as well not sure if it's like the main writer or if it's just one of the side writers but one of the writers wrote a lot of episodes of House of the Dragon. So again, these are some good fucking filmmakers or I guess, you know, TV makers, whatever, good creators working on this project. So I think that is a good sign. There also has been a leaked trailer for the Aqualite that's been available on Twitter and YouTube for honestly the past like couple months. I've seen the trailer based on those leaks and I'm not going to show any footage here, obviously, because I'll get my video taken down, but just search it up, look up on Twitter, you know, trailer for the Aqualite or something. It'll come up, I'm sure. I've seen it. It, it looks pretty damn good. It looks like it's going to have a high production budget. It's kind of on the same scope and scale of Andor in that sense. I'm not sure if it's going to have the same quality as Andor, but at the very least has the same scale and budget. You can tell based on what the trailer looks like. Everything looks great in that trailer. There's one shot with a bunch of Jedi with lightsabers and it looks cool. I'm, I'm excited for that shit. Like, I, I I can't wait to see this. In number three spot is going to be The Boys Season 4. Now, of course, I, I'm a really big fan of this franchise. You have, of course, the first three seasons of The Boys and Gen V. And we've only had one teaser for Season 4 so far. And it looks pretty good. This is coming out in June. We have, of course, Jeffrey Dean Morgan joining the cast as well, which you all know I love him as an actor. So it's going to be great to see him in this. I'm just hoping they're going to expand upon the story as much as they can, because I do think it's going to be a problem if they keep up the same exact story of, OK, let's try to take down Homelander the whole season. And then inevitably they fail at the end of the season. Like I, that'll be a problem. But I hope they end up doing something very different with it. I hope there's a lot of new characters. And I do believe there's a couple new characters they've already announced, like Firecracker, for example. That I think she's going to be one of the new characters of the seven. So I just want to see what type of crazy stuff's going to happen. They've already teased a lot of it. You know, the directors and writers, they keep talking all about it on Twitter. They keep saying this is the nastiest season of ever. It's going to have a lot of gruesome stuff. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I just don't have much more to say about it other than that. I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of people are going to be excited for this season. And yes, I am one of those people. In number two spot is going to be House of the Dragon season two. A lot of you Game of Thrones fans might be freaking out right now. Like, why am I not putting this number one spot? You'll, you'll see when we get to number one spot why this is number two. But 
obviously I'm very excited for this. The Game of Thrones universe has become one of my favorite universes of all time as I've watched this series the past year. And obviously House of the Dragon season one was fantastic. And the way it ended, I need to see what's going to happen next. That's what I'm most excited to see. The trailer looked great. We only had that one little quick trailer, but it was a good one. You can tell that they're keeping the same production value, the same budget, the same quality as the first season. As long as the writing stays the same, then we're in for a damn good season. I'm pretty confident this is going to be a, a solid season of television. I, I would be shocked if it ends up being bad or even just not good. I hope there's a lot more drama between, you know, <laughs> the High Towers and the Targaryens and just anyone involved. I hope there's, a, you know, some good action that they have. I'm, I just, I'm hoping for just some more damn good Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon television. That's all I need. And we're getting that here. There's like not one bit of me that's in any way, shape or form pessimistic about what this season will probably end up being. I'm pretty confident it's going to be great. There are a lot of other Game of Thrones spinoffs that have been announced, which is really exciting as well. But I don't think we're going to get those for quite some time. So this is probably going to be the last bit of like Game of Thrones content we're going to have at least until probably 2026 at this rate, because I, I, I don't I mean, there's been one that's been announced recently. I believe there's some like series called like the Hedge Knight or something. But I, I would be surprised if that came out before like this. I would be surprised if it came out in 2025, early 2025, maybe late 2025 at best. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully they will get to it sooner rather than later, because that will be obviously really exciting to watch. In number one spot, of course, is going to be The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. This is so obvious. This is going to be my number one spot. I mean, I've been waiting for this for, for ages. Ever since they announced they were going to do a Rick movie, I was so excited. And then obviously they turned it into a TV show. And I was obviously somewhat bummed out by that because I actually really wanted to see a Rick movie trilogy. I thought that would be really cool. But having a series could end up being better. I have no idea. It really just depends on the quality of it and you know how much care and budget and effort is actually put into it. This release is in February, so it's really soon. I cannot wait for that. But what really, really, really excites me about this more than anything is actually who is working on this project. So. The other Walking Dead spinoffs, Dead City, as well as the Daryl Dixon series, the writers and directors of those two shows are mostly writers and directors from season 10 and 11 of The Walking Dead that were only working on those two seasons. They did not work on seasons before that. They were not on the old Walking Dead seasons. And there's also a lot of new writers and directors that worked on those shows. So that's why the shows had a much more like season 11 Walking Dead feel and even just a completely new feel in some sense, which is good. But like, I was really hoping to have more of that like season four, five and six feel return. Based on the fact of who's working on this season, I think there's a high chance this will feel like peak Walking Dead content because we have the director writer duo of Greg Nicotero and Scott Gimple. And I know when people hear Scott Gimple, they freak out. They go, oh my God, no, not Scott Gimple because a lot of people hated some of the decisions he made in some of the later seasons, like season seven and eight. But regardless of you disliking those decisions does not change the fact that he wrote some of the best episodes of the show. Some of the highest rated episodes of the show were written by him. He was the showrunners for season four, five, six, seven, and eight. And obviously seasons four, five, and six are regarded as the peak of The Walking Dead by a lot of people. So having that back is going to be great. He was not writing much on seasons 9, 10, and 11, other than, of course, an episode here or there. He was just kind of like the chief executive of the Walking Dead franchise at that point. So he did have input on those seasons, but not as much input as, you know, some of the other writers may have. But most of his efforts since 2018 has been writing this series. So he's been working on it for like, what, six years? I'm sure there's been a lot of rewrites. I'm sure there's been a lot of changes in the script, but he at least has been attempting to write what the series is going to be since then. So chances are it's going to be damn good. And having Greg Nicotero there to direct is also going to be damn good. I'm not sure if he's doing every episode or just some of them. Same with, you know, Scott Gimple. I don't know if he's writing literally everything, but I'm sure he's at least leading it. And that is damn exciting. We've only had some quick teasers. We haven't actually had like a full trailer yet. Those teasers were good enough to get me insanely excited for this series. Hopefully it's as good as I'm hoping, you know, it's been hyped up to be. If it's not, that's going to be really disappointing, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your top 10 most anticipated shows of 2024? I would love to hear your thoughts. See you on my next one. Peace out.